In today's video, I explain how big your calorie deficit should be in order to reach your weight loss goals. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to discuss a question that I got on my Instagram direct message. So the question is just about how do you reach your weight loss goals? And the reason I like to discuss these topics is because although it's quite simple, although it is exactly as I say in all of my videos, there is a calorie in calorie out equation, okay? The amount of calories or energy that we consume, the amount of calories or energy that we expend, there's a direct correlation to weight gained and weight loss. However, there's so many nuances to that because, well, we're human beings. We deal with the nuances of society, of our friendship, our relationships, our daily routine. Heck, we all wanna go out and eat and enjoy things, drink and enjoy things, and fit these things into our lives. But we also, as human beings, tend to get in a rush. We wanna get things done now and get things done quickly. And we don't often appreciate the value of taking our time. Trust me, as a 45 year old man who's done things the wrong way many times and done things the right way many times, taking your time is always going to be a better result. But I wanna give you guys some tools. I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what the research says about weight loss. So for today's question, let me read it and then we're gonna discuss it. So I weigh 185 and I burn about 3000 calories a day. My question is how low of a deficit should I go to lose weight? I'm trying to get back to 160. I'm five foot seven in height. Same with how to find my maintenance calorie as well. So first things first, the c calorie deficit that we create is gonna have a really big impact on the, the, the weight loss progress every week, right? But it's also going to have an impact on how we can stand up to that. I never like to put my clients in a position where we're so aggressive with weight loss that we start to suffer in other areas of life. So let's talk a little bit about what the research has shown us. And this is something that I use as a person who coaches bodybuilders. My goal is not weight loss. My goal is fat loss. So when I'm trying to diet someone down to a certain weight, I am more concerned about body composition. I really, the scale has no meaning to me other than one form of progress, okay? Along with pictures, along with measurements so that I can see that we have less body fat. However, if my job as a coach is to get someone on a bodybuilding stage and I only focus on weight, I will fail miserably because we need to keep our muscle, even build our muscle through the process of competition prep. So the research that was done in division one volleyball players actually showed that those that lost 1% of their body weight per week or less were able to perform at the same level. However, those that lost more than 1% of their body weight per week, well, their performance began to suffer. Now there's a few things we can take away from that. First of all, we're talking about division one athletes. They're already very lean. Okay. So the way I think of my bodybuilding athletes that I coach is we're starting from a base that is probably far, far superior to that of a general population person, right? Someone just comes in to the gym, to our program and says, I just want to lose some weight. And they've never really done much athletically. That's a much different situation than taking someone who is a lifetime bodybuilder athlete who walks around, with a higher BMI or let's say more muscle, less body fat than the average person, okay? If you are far above your body fat set point, if you have a lot of extra body fat, well, you can definitely lose more than 1% of your body weight per week and not risk much. But as you get closer to that number, that's where weight loss needs to slow. And honestly, it's a pretty natural occurrence because you can lose body fat a little more rapidly when you have more body fat. But as you have less and less on your body, well, the effort to lose that body fat remains the same, if not higher, you just have less total body fat to lose. So the rate of fat loss is going to be a little bit slower. So naturally for someone who's athletic or has a background in resistance training, the rate of fat loss is going to be slower. So, what should you be doing right now? Well, even if you were to set your weight loss at 1% per week, that's still nearly two pounds per week, okay? Now, that's gonna be a little bit less as you get closer to that 160 mark, but let's just say you're averaging between one and a half and two pounds per week. How many weeks is that? You can simply do the math and figure out how long it should take, but let's talk a little bit about how we accomplish that. I have for you a macro calculator, okay? This is something that I've 
really had a lot of time and effort put into the staff at ProPhysique, because Lord knows I didn't develop this thing. Um, I just had the input on what it needed to do. It's doing the work for you guys. You guys have asked me so many questions about how do you set up your macros. It's free. You can literally go there, plug in a bunch of information. I'll put some of it on the screen here, and it's going to give you numbers for weight loss, for maintenance, for building. If you need to adjust it, simply come back. In a week, two weeks, things have changed, your weight has dropped, you can adjust it and refill out the form and continue. And you can figure out roughly where your maintenance is. Now, this is a calculation based on research, which has some validity to it, but it's nothing as valid as your experiences. So what I would actually suggest you also do is download an app, okay? Find an app where you can put in your daily calories, start plugging in your foods, have some accountability. You wanna make sure you're getting, well, an easy way to say protein would be a gram per pound of your goal weight. So your goal weight is 160. So if you're getting 160 grams of protein a day, that would be plenty, okay? That's gonna make sure that you're not losing muscle. You wanna make sure that you're doing your resistance training or keeping up with your athleticism, playing your sport, whatever it is that you like to do throughout this process. What you don't want to happen is to just see the scale come down, lose a lot of lean body mass as well as body fat, okay? Because then you're gonna end up in a place that is worse. You're gonna look worse, you're gonna feel worse, and likely if you put body fat back on, you're gonna end up replacing that lean body mass with fat mass. That's what the research indicates, okay? That's the body fat overshooting theory that I've seen many times happen when people have tried so hard to lose weight that they've done extreme measures, low calorie dieting, and put themselves in a position where now their body weight is similar to what it used to be, but they look worse because they have less lean body mass, more fat, and a terribly adapted metabolic rate due to these crazy protocols. Then you've got to spend time fixing that and resolving it. So what I would do is check out that calculator. I also have some free beginner's guides to training, to nutrition on the prophysique.com website. Hopefully that answers all your questions and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.